Hey, what's up, everyone? Eric Ross with the guy with the eye here. I didn't know if I really wanted to make a complete reaction to the MacBook Pro, but I think there's going to be something that throws a lot of people off that they're not really going to notice. Now, it's been a while since Apple has put out a brand new MacBook Pro. It's been a couple of years. People have wanted to refresh with the newer technology and everything that they had, and it really came to find out, and this is something that I thought when it first came out, is the MacBooks, the, the ones that are thinner, they have the butterfly keyboards, or they're very flat. Uh, was going to be more or less, and there wasn't a lot of um, space around the keyboard or anything. It was pretty much just as it is. It was very condensed. It was very minimal and simplistic that that might be a kind of a framework for their newer MacBook Pros. But that was a year and a half ago, a year ago at that point, and they just kept refreshing that and people were getting annoyed. But today, October 27th, 2016, Apple finally announced their new MacBook Pros. They actually had three new ones one being a bit different, and I'll cover that in a second. There are a couple things that will throw me off and will actually prevent me from buying this, but there's a lot of great stuff within this, and the tech that they threw into this is pretty amazing. They did jack up the price a bunch for these, which I'll cover in a little bit as well, but this is a lot of the main quick stuff on something like this. The biggest thing you're gonna hear and the biggest thing that they kept stressing, obviously, and well-deserved, is their, is their touch uh, is their touch bar and their new touch ID, which you can see right here. I'm just on their website. Um, I'm going to play a couple clips from the keynote just so you can see that. But as you see right here, this is looking at the 13 inch version with this new touch bar, which is this thing right here. This is basically a whole OLED touch strip in which it all depends on what, um, programs you're in, what functions you're using, and anything that you're doing, this will modify to what it is. But for example, they're doing video editing here and you can slide back and forth. You can choose a couple options. Uh, it could be a DVD that you're playing or it could be a, a movie DVD, haha. -ha. Could be a movie that you're playing that you literally just touch up there. You don't, they're trying to eliminate a need for an external mouse or clicking on the, um, on the trackpad right here, which is also a force pad on all the models as well, and getting everything through here. They also have a touch ID that usually comes up here, so that way you could turn the computer on, wake it up, and everything like that. But once again, just mentioning uh, what it is first, is they have a new 13-inch model. They have two new ones. They've got a basic version, which here are just the quick specs that you need, which does not have this touch bar, uh, this touch uh, bar or the touch ID and it's your regular function keys it will be 1500 bucks and it will ship out pretty much today so that one is available you can get that 2.0 gigahertz dual core i5 so it's going to be pretty fast compared to the older one which I have which I'm glad I bought it because the price is a little bit higher on these and it's a, it's a weird layout, which once again, I'll describe in a second. Eight gigabytes of memory, 256 gigabyte SSD and two Thunderbolt ports. So the problem is this also has a butterfly keyboard. And if you don't know what that is, they're the very, very flat the keyboard that they use in the MacBook, uh, is in the MacBook, but now they put it through all this and that is absolute garbage for something like this. And this is my opinion. One of the main reasons I didn't get a MacBook, A, they're not as powerful. B, I hate, hate, hate the feel of not having tactile buttons. So if this is a big deterrent for you, this might really drive you away from something like this, even though everything is packed into this. So they have the 13 inch standard function with none of the touchpad and everything in there that starts at 1500 bucks. Then they have this 13 inch right here, which once again, will look like this and this is what you'll be seeing, which will have 2.9 gigahertz i5 dual core, which will be pretty fast for the most part. And that gets uh, boosted a little bit, eight gigabytes of memory, uh, 256 SSD, four Thunderbolt, three ports, force touchpad, uh, butterfly keys as well. But this starts at $1,800. But then you get to the big boy. You get to the good old uh, four pound, 15 inch version. And this is one of the deluxe ones that they want to sell because the pricing off the back starts at $2,400. Touch bar, touch ID, 2.6 gigahertz quad core i7 so it's also going to be very fast and it is pretty light they're changing up the graphics card as well they're using a radon pro 450 which obviously isn't the best you, you would want something better but it's still going to do pretty good compared to what they have in there 16 gigabytes of ram for the price point you should be getting 32 gigabytes absolute bs for that part 256 ssd four thunderbolt s3 points force touchpad and butterfly keys now overall once again, the, the innovation of these really does impress me. I, th there is a lot that I want to do with it, with something like that, and there's a lot that I want. But they're just the price is keeping me away. The, the butterfly keys are really is what is not preferred on something like this. And it's really, do you do you personally like having, here's my um, my iMac version, do you like having the, the actual, actual buttons up top, 
or do you want to do it right there? They say if you want your, your uh, F buttons and everything like that, you just hit the function button, it changes the OLED strip to be the function key, so that way you can get exactly what you need. Now, the option doesn't go away, it's just everything is now becoming touch, you know, smart, innovative, with something like that so it's going to be a very implementive thing that you can use for video editing for photo editing and like for example right here i think her name was bradley but she was doing a photoshop thing and essentially they're just really encouraging using two hands so she'll have uh, her like left hand on the um on the uh touch bar up here doing some adjusting and then on the right she'll be having her uh finger do the mouse pad and painting so as you see her moving right here uh, she did some smart selection. She did some pasting. And it's everything is being driven through this this touch, pad, this touch bar right here, changing colors and everything. So it'll be an interesting way to, pay with the, uh, to play with the sliders. Uh, and they did show this with Adobe Photoshop. So there's going to be some interesting things. There's going to be some cool things. It's just that there are some limitations with the price and for the actual layout of the of the macbook pro that really will deter me from getting something like this once again i'm happy i got the older version there's absolutely nothing wrong with it they're still going to service it for another four to ten years uh, until they kick that away but it's a little lighter it re it resembles the macbook a lot but it's a bit faster so that's my thought in this i think that i think it's a really cool innovative thing the functionality that you can get and you can add to these touch bars but the problem is, can you justify the keys? Can you justify the price for what you want to do? Uh, the screen is going to be very good as well, Retina. But is it an upgrade from the older one? I don't find a reason for myself to upgrade. But I'd love to have this discussion more in the comments below. Are you excited for this? Is this something that you would want to do it if you would not? Let me know down below. Or is it just BS? Sorry, PC users. I know that you just hate Mac for the most part, but it's not about that discussion. It's just about a newer tech that people have been wanting for a while. And I think they've hit on a lot, missed a little bit, and that miss might drive away some people uh, as well. Thank you so much for watching. Eric Ross, the guy with the eye. Apple, pretty cool stuff, but a little disappointing in a sense as well.